Welcome to Blossom with Dr. Nancy Nyaga. I am Nancy Nyaga and here to engage us on couple relationships and especially in this season of COVID-19. Generally, couples are known to go through certain issues uh, that would either make them um, uh, separate or go through divorce, or even when they choose to stay together, the relationship is so cold and there is no intimacy. Um, some of these issues would range from infidelity, uh, financial problems, um, secrecy, financial issues, um, in-law issues, um, even spiritual issues where people are not attending the same um, religious um, uh, setting or having this sharing the same beliefs and the same values. Uh, it will also uh, range from um, other things of lack of commitment, probably from one partner. Insecurity issues that someone is so insecure and they are constantly suspecting the other person of being unfaithful even when they are not um, unfaithful. What has happened in this season of COVID-19, because of the lack of the usual coping mechanisms that uh, we have enjoyed there um, uh, before, like going to the gym, chamas, and weddings, and um, golfing, and even just being out there in social settings for the men, enjoying their company with their boys out there and watching football. Some of these things have taken away uh, the things that would have allowed people to continue coping with the issues that they are facing at the family level um, and the marriage level as well. However, sometimes the challenge of those coping mechanisms have been they've been to, uh, to go to where people are not working on the relationship issues, but they keep uh, to their work. Some people have become workaholic. Some people have, are so glued to the chat. They are constantly in a worship team, in a prayer team, in a leadership of sorts, in a chama, and therefore they've not given themselves time to work on the couple issues that have been uh, going on. And this season of COVID-19 has taken away those coping mechanisms and therefore couples are finding themselves with more time together at home, with more time probably uh, even inflicting each other more with other negative issues. And because there before they never learned how to communicate and resolve some of these issues, um, their pain, their wounding has been exacerbated. Allow me to quote a psychologist I love, this is John Gottman, who has worked uh, over 30 years with couples and checking what really causes couples to go through separation and divorce? What really causes couples to call it quits? And, and interestingly, he says, it is not some of those issues I mentioned there earlier. It is not the infidelity. It is not the, um, the financial issues. It is not the, uh, the, the abuse. It is not the in-law issues. It is not the insecurities that people may come with even from their childhood childhood issues. It is not personality issues like the ones we know of, the narcissism and all that. It is mainly the lack of conversation. It is mainly the lack of uh, talking about these issues. It is mainly the lack of commitment to sit and talk about these things. And John Gottman came up with four negative communication styles, he says, would predict separation or divorce. And this, which he calls the four horsemen, one of them is the criticism, that there's going to be a partner who constantly criticizes the other partner. And this partner who is constantly being criticized may be about the food, the way they dress, the way they make decisions, the way they even look. And yet this is the person you loved and you liked when they got married and now you constantly criticize how they look or how they do things or how they speak. And the partner who is constantly criticized constantly is also trying to defend themselves, explain themselves, justify themselves until they realize they're not winning. They cannot hack this critic. They cannot respond to them. And therefore, there is, um, um, uh, it, each person takes their position. We have the critic, and we have this person on this other side who is constantly trying to defend themselves. And when they fail to win, they may get contemptuous. They may start throwing a few words because now they've already been wounded and they're hurting. And the critical person is also can get contemptuous as well. And this person who is trying to defend themselves and justify themselves, finally when they lose the battle, they withdraw, they isolate themselves. They have a fourth communication style that we call stonewalling. 
They build a high and a very thick wall around them where the critic cannot get them, cannot reach them anymore with their criticism. And therefore, when we have all these four negative communication styles, the criticism, the contempt, the defensiveness, and the stonewalling, according to John Gottman, these are the predictors of separation and divorce in couples and, and, and um, in marriage. And therefore, it is not about the issues because people can be taken through a process of healing, a process of forgiving one another, a process of recommitting themselves to work on the relationships, just like the way we are given feedback in our workplaces. Our business goes down and we seek ways of, um, you know, uh, getting it back on its feet. We seek ways of seeing the help we may need. We even sign up to go and do our courses, do a master's degree, do an MBA, do a course that will help you be able to do your job. But when it comes to couple relationships, and this is where we fall back to, we don't do anything. We don't invest. We are too selfish. We know and we don't want to be told. We are not committed to this process. When couples are experiencing these four negative communication styles, that is the criticism, the defensiveness, the stonewalling and the contempt, and you find that you have at least two or more of them, this is where then you find that the intimacy is so affected and that the two individuals in the relationship are not able to engage in a healthy relationship. There's going to be emotional cutoff in the relationship. There is going to be a lack of intimacy. And this makes both individuals vulnerable to affairs, vulnerable to infidelity. Where in your business circles, in the workplace, you're thinking other people appreciate you more uh, than your partner would. And many times we need to check again. The people in the workplace and your business circles don't know you the way your partner knows you. So we still need to come back and work on that relationship. When I work with young people, uh, these are people who are young and dating, 25 years to 35 years um, about there. And they are talking about the people they would want to settle down with. Uh, the men, you'll hear them talking about, um, they're looking for a beautiful girl, a smooth skin, well-rounded, light-skinned, well-educated and intellectual. And uh, the girls will also be talking about tall, dark and handsome, financially stable, God-fearing. And as I listen to them, and, and I always pose a question, um, uh, what, what is that about? Do you notice everything you have mentioned is mainly, probably other than God-fearing, is mainly physical. There's nothing about the character of the person. And to the young who um, I would want to talk to right now is to say what you live with in marriage is not those things that we mention a lot, those things that we go out looking for. A beautiful girl, a handsome, tall, dark and handsome, financially stable. What you live with is the character of the person. How they secure they make you feel, how committed they are to the relationship, um, and, and um, how loving they are going to be, the respect they accord you, the value um, they, they accord you, and the worth they accord you as well. And most of the time, then, as, as individuals, and, and when I talk to them, I ask them, do you know what you will be taking to the relationship? And most of the time, they are, not have, they are clueless. They're just looking for someone. And this is why I talk to them about the golden rule in relationships, that you give unto others, treat others how you would have them treat you. So this is where if you want to be loved, if you want to be respected, if uh, you want somebody to be secure with you, are you secure with yourself? Do you have self-love? Do you have self-worth? Can you take a compliment? Can somebody tell you you look beautiful and you say, yes, I know, and feel good about it? Or are you feeling so empty and so, so worthless that when you go into a relationship, you're waiting for the person to fill you up? For the young and dating Take care of yourselves. Ask yourself what you're taking to the relationship because that is what is going to be reciprocated. If you're taking low self-worth, if you're taking criticism, if you're taking um, negativity, that is what you're going to pull out from your partner, whoever you're going to settle down with. And with time, they'll end up being as negative as you are. So take care of yourselves.
Take care of yourselves in a way that you build your self-esteem, you value yourself enough. You're not about finances. You're not about tangibles. You're looking for that character that will make you feel loved, that will make you feel cared for, that will make you feel secure. And as you do that, then you're bound to enjoy a relationship that has healthy communication, that lacks the four negative communication styles I talked about, where there is uh, going to be criticism and defensiveness and stonewalling and lack of intimacy. And to the people who are settled and married, I want to remind us where you have invested and worked on your relationship and you're still going through abuse and especially physical abuse, your safety, your wellness comes first. If you have tried all you can and nothing is working, seek some space to go and find out what you want with your life. It does not take one person to build a relationship. It takes both the individuals in that relationship to work on it. You do not have to tie yourself down to an abusive relationship, seek help, and if it is not working, step out. Negotiate from outside. Take care of yourselves, take care of your relationships. This is what is lasting, this is what is going to keep us safe. And for those who are seeking to settle down, please look out for the character of the person. That is what you're gonna live with. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel, Blossom with Dr. Nancy Nyaga, for more on mental wellness, building healthy relationships, and coping with life issues. Stay tuned for our next episode.